Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to The Life's Good. And for those that don't know, my name's AJ and uh, I live with my wife in the northeast of England and we use our garden for growing fruit and vegetables as well as having an ornamental section where we've got lovely flowers and shrubs and a small pond. But primarily we, we are about growing our own food. And having watched the news recently and the crisis spreading across the globe, I've been reminded of a campaign that was brought about, I believe, by the Ministry of Defence. It may have been the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm not entirely certain. But back in the 1930s, there was a campaign launched in England, which was entitled Dig for Victory. And that particular campaign encouraged everybody to grow their own fruit and vegetables in their own backyards and gardens. Um, allotments were being introduced at the time in order to facilitate some areas for growing food on. If you had a reasonable sized garden, you could turn your lawn into a vegetable patch and uh, several other areas of your garden could be utilized to grow food. Um, if you lived in a home that didn't have a garden attached to it, you can easily grow food in containers, window boxes, tubs, buckets, all manner of things. But the basic campaign was to encourage people to grow their own food because there was very little food actually getting into the shops. Hence, rationing was introduced. Now, it's, uh, it's a bit ironic that recently I've heard the term rationing used by some supermarkets who are actually limiting the amount of goods that an individual can purchase at the tills in that supermarket. And I've heard more people complaining that they can't get basic staples like carrots and potatoes and salad crops and bits and pieces because the supermarket doesn't have any left. Well, I suppose that brings us to the whole uh, philosophy and reasoning behind my channel, The Life's Good, because I like to grow my own vegetables here at home in uh, my garden plot. And we grow in containers, potatoes. We grow on the ground salad crops, um, root vegetables, peas, beans, all manner of fruit and vegetables. And we even have room for a small chicken coop. Now, up until recently, we had about half a dozen chickens, but unfortunately they were of an age where they've all gradually passed away in the last 10 months or so. And we're actually only left with one. But that one chicken is giving us one egg per day. And she doesn't cost a lot to run, basically. Um, she eats a lot of scraps from the kitchen and uh, peelings and uh, tidying up from the garden. I put all the lawn clippings in her run. And in return, we get a very, very nice egg every day from her. Um, under the circumstances that are prevailing at the moment, I'm seriously considering maybe getting one or two more in order that we can have more eggs for ourselves. Um, certainly worth considering. But as I was saying, what I do here, what we do in the life's good, is probably more relevant in the current climate than ever before. People are complaining they don't have food, and yet they're sitting in a house with a garden around it. That garden can supply a family with food almost all year round. Admittingly, it would be seasonal. Certain things grow at certain times of the year. Your winter root vegetables, your spring vegetables, your summer salad crops, peas, beans, tomatoes, all manner of things can be grown in a small plot 
you don't need huge amounts of room in order to grow a little bit of thought a little bit of, lev of effort and uh, you can produce food at home so uh, on that note moving on to today um, I'm in a situation where I'm starting to sow seeds for this coming season I'm planning on what I'm growing for this year we are actually still using produce that we've harvested last year and have been able to store in our freezer and we have got fruit and vegetables in our freezer that we grew last year and we are still using those um, so we're probably in a fortunate position compared to a number of people that we have grown before we grown last year the year before year before that and so on and we have a sort of almost constant supply of fresh vegetables fresh fruit stored and frozen fruit and vegetables from our garden so i wanted to just discuss with you today some of the things that i am uh, planning on sowing this afternoon um, probably just in the greenhouse and we've discussed my greenhouse my small six foot by four foot greenhouse i've lined it with bubble wrap to insulate it that little bit more um, we have had some mild weather and I'm just looking over my shoulder for the maximum minimum thermometer and I can tell you I haven't adjusted this all oh, for six eight weeks probably nearly two months I've just left it hanging on the back wall and I can tell you that in that eight week period so the last two months which would have been um, the end of January all of February and a little bit of March what are we at to, we're tw uh, what are we today 18th of March today so uh, sort of beginning of February up to now the coldest it's gotten inside my greenhouse is minus 2.8 which is quite chilly but then I have not had any heating on the outside temperatures have gotten much colder we have had minus 5 and minus 6 on a few nights so that bubble wrap inside here does protect it quite a lot now we have had some sunny days and the sun on this glass through this bubble wrap has heated this greenhouse up to 28.1 celsius now i'm just going to quickly convert back to fahrenheit for the benefit of my uh, american viewers the coldest it's been inside the greenhouse is 27 degrees fahrenheit the warmest it's been is 82.6 degrees fahrenheit and those figures are relevant to about the last six to eight weeks inside the greenhouse that's not outside that's not the climate that's inside my greenhouse and as we're speaking i've got the door open i've got you stood in the doorway looking into the greenhouse at me and in here as i'm talking it is currently 57.4 fahrenheit which equates to 14.1 just gone up to 14.5 celsius nice ambient temperatures for sowing and growing plants seeds in here either to use directly from here or to later plant out into the ground i think guys with a little bit of thought and a little bit of encouragement a little bit of advice and guidance people will be able to produce their own food from the areas around their homes no matter how small if they put the effort in put your mind into that frame of i need to grow something and start doing it once you start and you realize how straightforward and how simple it is you'll want to do more you'll want to do more and more and more you'll increase your yield you'll start to build up a stock and you won't look back and believe me the taste of produce fresh from your greenhouse your balcony your garden an allotment if you can get one the taste and aromas of that produce is second to none far surpasses what you get from the shops and the supermarkets and uh, 
the reward for effort, the actual, uh, the feeling you get from producing your own food, from sowing it, watching it grow, harvesting it, bring it indoors and putting it on the plate. The reward for effort is amazing. The sense of achievement of what you've actually achieved, what you've done over the period of time up to that point where you're eating your food is second to none, really is. And a uh, little greenhouse like this, you can produce quite a lot from in here. And if you watched my videos last year, you can see I had an abundance of stuff in here. I almost couldn't use it all, to be honest, guys. It, it was just crazy. Um, I was giving seeds away to people. I had seeds germinated in here, no room left on my garden. I was giving small plant seedlings away to friends, family, and so on, rather than waste them. But uh, in a small space like this, I can grow quite a lot. Now I did convert the other old shed into a small greenhouse. It wasn't that successful. That old shed is a bit rotten and I am still considering removing that and uh, replacing it with a second small greenhouse. Now I'm fortunate enough to have that little bit of space there. I've got a reasonable size garden here, so I'm able to utilize the space quite well with greenhouses and vegetable plots and so on and so forth, chicken runs and all that. So I'm, I'm quite fortunate, but you can still do it yourself with a small space, you can use a greenhouse, you can use grow bags, containers, buckets, pots, dustbins, you name it, you can use it to grow food in. And there's no reason why you shouldn't. Another point to note is that you don't need lots of fancy equipment to grow in. I use an assortment of trays pots, containers. Some have been purchased purpose-made, i.e. some of these sort of black um, planting trays, which I use multi-cells in these multi-cell plastic sheet things. They're ideal. You've got uh, 24 cells in here, so you could in fact grow 24 individual plants in these cells. Uh, prior to planting them into a bigger pot. Or you can multi-sow, I do multi-sow sometimes, you can put two or three or four seeds in each of these. And then once they're growing and they're starting to fill these cells, you put them into a bigger container or out into the ground. Um, we'll come on to the actual, what you do with each seed later on in my videos. But these sort of trays, ideal. Um, I've got some others here. These are much larger cells. One, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. There's 40 cells in these. The, these actually come apart into little sections. So you've got, got 10 in each section. 40 cells in a complete tray, 10 in each section. Again, you can put one or two seeds in each one, grow them on. They sit inside these black plastic trays. Those are purpose made. You buy them in garden centers, local supermarkets and little DIY outlets, all manner of places. You can buy these sort of trays, these sort of seeds. Um, I also use plastic containers that have previously contained produce that we've used indoors. The, these contained mushrooms. I've saved them. I've made some holes in the bottom and I use those for growing in. You can use all sorts of containers. I've actually got a, a, a sweet container here. Now I'm using this to store all my seeds in, but if I wanted to, I could grow in this. I could make some drainage holes in the bottom, put some compost in and grow. And uh, you can grow salad crops in multi-salad leaves, um, dried peas. I was gonna come on and tell you about the dried peas. If you buy a box of dried peas from the supermarket, it costs you pence per half a kilo or a kilo or something like that. And you put some compost in one of these trays, you put a couple of inches of compost in there, put a layer of these peas in there, push them down in, spread a bit of soil on the top, water them. These will germinate and grow and you've got pea shoots to use in salads and sandwiches and so on. They're ready in weeks. My, my goodness me, they do grow quickly and you have to keep snipping them off 
to keep using them. You won't keep up with them once they start. You're not growing them into maturity to get peas from them. You just want the shoots, the little leaves and the shoots. Excellent in salad. The other types of tray I use, these have holes already drilled in them. These are an ideal little tray. You could sprinkle seeds in here and grow them, no problem at all. I like to get mixed lettuce leaves. So that is, I, I buy separate lettuces, seeds for different lettuces. And then I take a pinch of each seed, mix them up and spread them in these sort of trays and let them all grow and germinate. And they are what I call my cut and grow again lettuce. And you just keep snipping the outer leaves off, using them indoors and the plants continue growing and producing more leaves. So a tray like this will keep you in supply of lettuce leaves for a good month. Uh, ideal for your salads on the side of your plate with a dinner, all that sort of thing. Quick and easy to grow. Um, I use little flower pots. I've got little pots that go in these little trays and containers. Uh, my wife purchased some flowers last year that came in this little container with a little handle on it. Don't need the handle, but the container I've kept, ideal for growing in. All manner of things. At work we have a drinks dispenser. And these little plastic cups get used once, maybe twice, whatever, and thrown away. And uh, bring them home wash them, make sure they're clean. I stand them up in batches, drill holes into the bottom. So I'll take four or five of these. There's a good dozen there. Put a drill through to make sure they've got a little drainage hole in the bottom, as you can see there. They've got a drainage hole in there. These plastic cups are fantastic for sowing and growing in. And you can produce some plants in there. Once they're mature enough, put them out in the garden or into a bigger container or flower pot. Um, not sure what else I've got to show you in here, guys. I've got all manner of containers, tubs, pots, you name it. If you look at what you've got in your home, you can grow in them. Um, there is something else. Something else, guys. Bear with me. I'm just fishing around in here. Now, I know loo rolls are on the agenda at the moment, and some people have got a garage full others don't have a roll between them um, but the inners of loo rolls are ideal for growing in you can actually if you wanted to you could put, make some slots in and fold the end over turn it up and you've got a little growing pot soil inside sow your seeds stand them on a tray keep them moist they grow and the whole thing can be planted in the ground or the next big container or flower pot whatever you're doing with them but it will break down, decompose and go into the soil. So you're adding fiber to the soil. You're not disturbing the roots when you transfer the thing into the ground. Ideal for growing in several of these in a little tray with the compost in, sow in the top, job done. So things like that, very, very useful for um, growing in. Another thing I do is watering. Um, you don't need fancy watering cans. Why? I have here a pop bottle. I'm not sure what was in here. Lemonade or Coca-Cola or Pepsi or something similar. Um, a bottle of squash would be similar. But what I've done, you discard the lid from this and you use the top from a washing up liquid bottle. Whoops, nearly dropped it. The washing up liquid bottle fits on the top of there. So this, filled with water, then becomes an ideal waterer for aiming a small jet of water at the base of all your small plants as they're growing. So you don't need expensive equipment for that. There's lots of things you can use. If you look around, things you throw away are ideal to use to grow in. They really are. Something as small as a loo roll or a plastic cup. Something bigger, container like that, mushroom containers, sweet boxes, plastic containers that had chocolates in, things like that. Ideal for growing in, guys. You don't need fancy equipment. I've put some compost a uh, seed and potting compost in this mushroom container. Um, it's about an inch and a half 
in depth I suppose and I've put in there now this compost was purchased at a local bargain supermarket it was 20 litre bag cost £1.99 it will fill quite a few containers and pots believe me now I put some in this little container drainage holes made in the bottom I'm just going to take a handful of my dried peas now and spread them on the top of there now you can put them on quite thickly you want lots of nice pea shoots so there we go guys that's all I've done is I've spread those about on that pot you can see what I've done there okay and then I've got a little bit more com compost here just going to throw down on top there it's a bit lumpy that's okay doesn't matter just break up some of the big lumps a minute and spread that around on the top of there and that is it that will need a little bit of water the compost is quite moist um, but not quite enough what you need to do now is uh, just a sprinkle of water on there I'm not sure if I've got any in my little pot yeah, I have I've got a little watering can here I did say you don't need fancy equipment that's quite a nice little watering can but it's ideal in the greenhouse and just a little trickle of water on there now that little pot is going to produce a nice small crop of pea shoots and I can Put, you could put it in the greenhouse you can put it on a kitchen windowsill bathroom windowsill a bedroom windowsill anywhere if you're going to put it on a windowsill you get direct sunlight it will dry out very very quickly not so good so you do need to make sure it's kept moist but put it somewhere where there's a nice ambient temperature you don't want to expose this to the frost now um, but that little pot there is now ready to grow and you'll get pea shoots from that I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more today so I've got two or three of these containers with lovely pea shoots growing I'm also going to take some of these trays and I'm going to be growing some lettuce I've got all sorts of lettuce in here if I have a look what have we got here that's actually some sorrel guys sorrel's very lovely it can be used in salads uh, it's got a lemon flavor we've got some Lolo Rossa now some of these seeds are left over from last year I didn't use them all but if you look on the back these uh, can be sown up to 2022 so providing I've kept the little packet of the foil packet inside I've kept the lid folded down I kept that inside the paper packet so I know exactly what's in there the information is on the back telling you when to sow when to harvest and so on and so forth little growing tips um, and it gives you the the year it was packed and the year you should sow it by and in this case 2022 it's only 2020 I will probably use all that this year but I only used part of it last year and I had an abundance of lettuce so I've got Lolo Rossa that I can sow and grow what else have we got here radishes grow them in containers very very shallow root base they have a little tap root goes down but everything grows on the surface little globes of lovely radish you can grow those in containers as well as on the ground uh, what have we got here all year round lettuce mizuna which is like a, a feather edged lettuce I love you can see that very well guys that picture that's mizuna the all year round is a bit of a sort of a butterhead type lettuce um, again all these seeds are from last year and it says on here that I should sow them by 2022 so they're all good to use at the moment so I purchased those last year each one of these packets was one pound so I've got one two that was a pound three four four or five pounds I spent last year and had an abundance of lettuce and radish from that garden I've still got seed left over from that batch that I can produce just as many this year I think that is as cheap as chips 
if chips are cheap anymore. I don't know. Growing your own food doesn't cost a fortune. A little bit of effort, a little bit of soil, a few seeds. You can do it. You guys can do this. I know you can. A nice container. Sew things in. Cabbages require a bit more room. But again, they can be grown in your flower beds. You can throw, throw the seed into a container in your greenhouse or in your kitchen or your spare room or wherever. Let it germinate and grow. And when they're big enough, transplant them to where you need them to mature. Flower beds, backyards, containers, all manner of places. You can put cabbages in. They're quite ornamental, some of these cabbages. You get red ones, you get pointed ones, you get big round ones. You get some with really big, loose, crinkly shaped leaves. As I said, ornamental. They look great in amongst colorful flowers. And it's your dinner. You can do this. Guys, there's loads of space when you look. Loads and loads of space around your home that you can grow fruit and vegetables in. Peas. These are my main crop peas. There's enough left over from last year. I could have a good row of peas from these. Um, plant by 2021. I bought them last year. Uh, what did I pay for these? I think I've removed the... Oh no, £2.50. So I paid £2.50 and had a complete row of peas in my garden and I've still got enough for another row this year. It doesn't take a lot of effort, a lot of money, a little bit of thought, a few containers, some potting compost and you're away. And once you start, you'll want to grow more. You can grow tomatoes indoors, chilies indoors. You can grow potatoes in buckets. You can grow potatoes in sacks, guys. You can get a sack or a big plastic bag, fill it with compost, grow your potatoes in it. Brilliant. And the potatoes can be stored. Peas and beans in containers. Easy. So there's a lot of ideas here. A lot of ideas. And looking, as I said, at the current situation, particularly in this country, with the shops running out of basic produce, if you produce your own basic food at home, you won't go back to the supermarket stuff. It tastes so much better. It's so much more rewarding. It's a lot less expensive. As I said, a pound for a packet of lettuce leaves. And you'll get dozens of lettuces for that one pound. How much do you pay for an iceberg in the supermarket? And it probably didn't come from England. Grow your own. We all need to start thinking about producing our own food at home. Just as they did back in the 30s. Wartime, not very much getting through. Shops were short of produce. Rationing came into effect. I suppose those that lived in the countryside with big gardens and everything that they had to uh, on supply in the villages in the country probably might have been a bit better off than those in the town but as I've already said with a little bit of effort no matter where you live no matter what your circumstances you should be able to produce something at home to eat and it's all down to education and encouragement advice and guidance and it's something perhaps that our government hasn't picked up on recently. We're all concerned about containment and isolation and so on and so forth. I'm not mentioning that word that everyone's talking about at the moment, but grow your own fruit and veg, guys, and you'll never be short of something. It's what we all need to be doing. It's what everybody needs to be encouraging everybody else to do. I'm going to leave you with that thought, guys. I've rambled on a little bit today. You can grow food at home. It's as simple as that. The Dig for Victory campaign, Dig for Britain campaign of the 30s needs to be reintroduced. And if you agree with me, perhaps by sharing this video, sharing my thoughts, we can encourage more people to take on board that wonderful uh, 
sense of achievement of producing their own food at home. Be interesting to hear your feedback, guys. I've shown you a couple of ideas here today. Dried peas from the supermarket will grow. Lettuce leaves, spring onions, peas, beans, tomatoes, chilies. It goes on and on and on. Strawberries. Wow, you get a few tubs with strawberries in. You've got strawberries in the summer for your pudding. Honestly, nothing better than a fresh strawberry. Raspberries you can grow against a fence or a wall. We've got a couple of trees in the garden. They produce apples and pears and plums. We're lucky we have the room for a tree. You may not, but other fruit doesn't take up a lot of room. Rhubarb can be grown in a container. Um, it likes a little corner in the garden to be left alone to do its thing. It will give you rhubarb year after year after year. Wonderful rhubarb crumble, rhubarb pie, rhubarb jam, rhubarb wine. Honestly, guys, it's a no-brainer. Well, look, whatever you're doing, you look after yourselves, right? You take care. Please be safe. Be happy. Spread the word. We need to grow our own. You take care, guys. Bye-bye for now.